So for our next speaker, we'll give an overview of open source IoT systems. Uh, he's the IoT program manager and evangelist at the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and he's going to roll it up to more IoT devices. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Benjamin Kabe. <laughs> I'm good. Um, thanks for having me. All right, talking about open source for IoT, I'm with the Eclipse Foundation, so I'm biased. Like you will hear uh, a lot about uh, what's going on in the Eclipse community, but yeah, I want to, to use this talk as um, a way to let you know about what's next. Like wh what's after um, having used LoRa, LoRa One, the Things Network to connect your things. There's probably more than you want to do with your your data. You want to analyze the data. You want maybe like one thing that I didn't hear today yet is edge analytics, like how do you maybe process some of the data at the edge? So that's kind of the, the point of my talk. Just a, to start with something that I believe is not uh, very controversial, open source wins, right? Um, many of the talks today uh, uh, demonstrated that, and if we look just at the internet, right? A couple decades ago, those were great silos, if you will, great stacks uh, for, uh, for doing uh, file transfer and inst instant messaging and whatnot. Only if you were, say, um, a, a CompuServe user, it was very unlikely that you would be able to, to send data uh, or to send files or to chat with people from, from AOL. Today, open source runs the internet and like mm, Linux is an obvious one, the, the Apache server and PHP Go, you name it, right? It's also about open standards, and I think um, like if uh, LoRa, LoRaWAN can be as successful as this guy, uh, then you're all uh, in a good uh, uh, in a good shape. Uh, this is Google Trends for MQTT. So MQTT is a protocol that's been invented in the late 90s, actually, for monitoring oil pipelines in a, an inefficient way over satellite link, basically. Um, and the standard, like the MQTT protocol, has been an open standard for a while, actually. Um, like in, in the early 2000, uh, IBM uh, opened the specification of the protocol. Um, so the standard already started to, to take off, basically. But actually, it really took off when uh, the open standard was uh, accompanied by open source code and a reference implementation in the form of the code that IBM and a bunch of others donated in the form of the Eclipse PAHO project that some of you might be using if you, use, um, uh, if you do MQTT. And so in 2011, basically, uh, what happened is that MQTT really, uh, really took off. And um, in a few slides, we'll see that it, it really uh, took off, right? And it's now when, um, so we are an open source foundation. And one thing we do is we, we run developer surveys when we ask IoT developers what's the protocol uh, or protocols you, you care about for, for IoT. HTTP is one, well, because obviously at some point when the data is in the cloud, you probably have some kind of REST APIs to manipulate your data. But for everything messaging, MQTT is, is really the leading protocol. It's of course about open hardware as well, just, just to make sure that you guys realize uh, that uh, you're not the only ones doing open hardware. Basically everything uh, in the industry is uh, one way or the other, uh, basing their, uh, their products, their proof of concepts on, on open hardware. So again, this is the, the survey that, that we did. So open source, open hardware, certainly the, the, the right combination. And back to, to MQTT and, and, and why open source really helped. Um, it's really about not reinventing the world. It doesn't make sense to reinvent yet another um, messaging protocol for, for IoT. And uh, well, those guys, they, they basically realized that, right? So unfortunately, and <laughs> that will be uh, later in my presentation, uh, those IoT platforms are somewhat proprietary, right? I mean, you need to, uh, you, you can have access to really nice features uh, and pay uh, per, per, per usage, et cetera, uh, but they are proprietary. But when it comes to interfacing your devices, your things with those uh, platforms, Turns out that if you want to talk MQTT uh, to AWS IoT or to Azure or to, um, uh, to IBM uh, Bluemix, this is all based on the open source uh, reference implementation of MQTT that I was referring to earlier, right? Those guys realized that the, the implement implementations that, that are out there uh, in open source, 
might not be the best, uh, right? But at least uh, they happen to, to work just fine and developers are familiar with it. So uh, they just, just, just go with it. And maybe they, they add a, a bunch of extra APIs on top of, but uh, that's essentially what runs uh, th those platforms. Uh, open source is also about the modularity. One thing that really um, strikes me um, in, in, um, in today's talks uh, is that you guys are really focusing, and, and that's really great, on, on making sure that uh, at the connectivity layer, you have lots of freedom, right? We saw the, the, the great presentation with all those modules that all uh, support LoRa, LoRaWAN. You have lots of, lots of freedom, but what's really important is that you really want to, so there's, in any IoT solution, there's basically three stacks of software that, that you need to deploy. The stuff that will run in your end nodes, your, your constrained devices, if you will the gateways, and at the very end of the day, you want to send your data to a cloud platform, right? To some kind of cloud backend, some kind of server, so that you can analyze the data, so that you can make the data available uh, over APIs, uh, secured APIs, ideally. Uh, and you want freedom, like, all across uh, the, the, the three stacks. When your gateway is sending data to AWS IoT, are you really independent of AWS IoT? When, once they start like changing the pricing model, how do you can can you really change uh, and have your application, your gateways uh, start uh, dealing with with a different backend, right? And this is where open source can help. Not only open standards, like maybe uh, using MQTT is already a nice meeting point to make sure that you can um, uh, you can have some interoperability at this layer. But yeah, for, for all, the, all the other uh, aspects of the stack, you, you want so, some modularity. Um, like the independence to the, to the platform as well, like the, the code that runs on, on your gateway, is it really easy to, to deploy your uh, gateway stack? Like no matter whether it's just a, sort of a pure um, um, the things network gateway or LoRaWAN gateway or something that's more, uh, more capable in terms of running custom applications, et cetera, can I run my code on an Intel gateway or on an ARM gateway in the same way. I don't know, like if you use open source, it's more likely that, that this will be possible. Um, if you use open standards um, as well. And so this is where, so there's lots of open source um, uh, um, initiatives around IoT, right? And in this community in, in particular, um, at Eclipse, we, um, we, we do a lot. Uh, so Eclipse IoT is part of the, the Eclipse Foundation, which like, uh, Apache Linux is basically an open source software foundation. We help people and companies uh, collaborate on open source software and be successful in building um, products, services, like and selling services on top of the open source software. Back to the, um, the, the opening keynote this morning, it's really about growing the pie, right? Not reinventing the wheel, not competing on the commodities and really growing the pie. So we have lots of open source projects and uh, in particular uh, around IoT. So that's actually 30 different projects. Some of them you might be familiar with uh, and some uh, you might not. So that's kind of the, the point of the second half of, of my, my presentation, trying to sort of name drop some of those projects and why you should um, maybe start paying attention. The community is pretty active, uh, lots of developers, uh, lots of code available there. And yeah, my goal in the next uh, um, a few minutes is trying to, to make you aware of, of what, what's going on there. Um, so 30 different projects, you can take them and use them as sort of uh, basic building blocks for a very specific needs. Like if you care about um, a communication protocol like MQTT or like Co-op or maybe um, more in the industrial um, IoT field, like you want to do uh, OPC UA, we have like libraries in actually diff different programming languages that, that you can use. Um, but even more so, uh, you can also take them and, and sort of consume them as ready to use stacks for building your constraint devices, uh, your gateways and, and your server um, uh, platform. So what's available for, for constraint devices? Like um, for example, uh, an, an, an interesting, uh, 
aspect of Eclipse Paho is that it runs really well on, um, on embedded devices, right? So there's a very, very small footprint implementation of the MQTT protocol and MQTT SN as well, by the way, which is MQTT for sensor networks, even if you don't have IP, which probably you don't uh, in, 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 in many cases, you can still uh, do some kind of publish subscribe uh, communication scenarios and that, that would be something that's available as part of PAHO. We mentioned um, uh, today a couple times over the air upgrades, like if you cannot update your devices, you cannot secure them. Um, so probably if you do LoRa, LoRa 1, there might be like dedicated workflows for doing update uh, for those devices. But I would be shocked if all of you in the room are basing your solutions 100% on LoRa and LoRa 1. You likely have somehow existing devices, right, that you need to, to connect and to, to interface to your global IoT solution. You have legacy equipment that might be cellular modules, 2G, 3G modules. How do you upgrade the firmware of those uh, little guys and, and things like that? So the lightweight M2M standard is, uh, um, is widely adopted in, in the cellular world and, and it's also um, yeah, be, being um, ported to, to other, like in other areas, the reference implementation of the standard would be something that's available um, out of the, the Eclipse community. Building gateways. Um, I mentioned edge analytics earlier. Um, the gateway is all about the connectivity, of course, like, like providing the routing of the messages, etc. But usually it can be more, right? When you, once, once you have these beefy, mains-powered, um, uh, dual-core um, uh, machine sitting at the edge of your network, you might want to deploy custom applications on top of, right? And uh, that's the goal of Eclipse Cura. So basically you have um, not only all the routing thingy, right? Think about uh, something like OpenWRT on steroids. Like I want my gateway to, to take care of keeping the cellular connection open as well as behaving as a Wi-Fi access point. Maybe I have two, uh, two Wi-Fi uh, interfaces, so another one is gonna be used uh, to connect to, to the one, et cetera, et cetera. So that's for like the, the pure connectivity layer. And actually you could probably deploy uh, some, some LoRaWAN uh, stuff in there as well. And then it's also an application container, so you can deploy plugins so that the gateway can start doing stuff with the data that goes through it, right? So a uh, gateway being plugged into um, a shop floor in, in, um, in a factory, maybe interfaces with a Modbus network on, or an OPC UN network and, and gets data from, from machines and consolidates the data locally and leveraging the, the connectivity layer of, of the Cura gateway will push the data uh, to the cloud over MQTT, over all kinds of, of communication protocols. So if you, if you never looked at, at Cura, you might want to, to, to have a look. Um, Eclipse Smart Home is sort of a, sp a specialized gateway stack, more for home automation. So some of you either like as, as pet projects or just actually for, uh, for real projects, you might be familiar with Open Hub. So this is all things home automation. What's my, um, like the rules that I want to apply when the temperature goes above a, a specific threshold, etc. What are the hundreds of protocols that I need to support when it comes to interfacing with IKEA light bulbs or uh, Philips Hue light bulbs, etc. This is all available as part of the Eclipse Smart Home and Open Hub ecosystem, all available under a business-friendly open source license, which basically means that take the code, ship it in your commercial product, and you're done. Um, and this is where um, I want to, to, to spend uh, some time, actually, starting with, with, with the blank page. The cloud, like, yes, and, and actually, I'm really interested in, in chatting with you after, after my talk and, and tomorrow as well. What happens when you, you send your data, your, your very, actually, very small data points, to the things network or to some kind of, of backend, but then what's next? Like, and there's lots of pieces that, that are probably missing somehow. First, and starting with how, how to manage the devices. You have tens, hundreds, thousands of devices out there, the gateways, the, the, the nodes, like all, all, the, all the constrained devices. How do you know, how do you get a, a status of which device is running what version of my firmware? How do I roll out new upgrades to my gateways? Like I want to upgrade the, the Linux um, distro or the, the Cura um, distro. How can I do that in a way that, that maybe um, 
like over a couple of days, I want to do that. I don't want to upgrade my thousand devices at the exact same time because like downloading 100 megabytes worth of firmware at the exact same time will just kill my, my network. I don't want to break all my devices at the same time. So something like Hogbit is actually uh, addressing that, that particular need, right? Software rollouts, everything software rollouts uh, with, for example, uh, the help of Flash and if the, the, the actual protocol you care about for rolling out your updates is lightweight M2M, but maybe you care more about TR069 or a proprietary um, protocol for pushing uh, new Docker images or whatnot, but at least you have like the, the generic uh, orchestrator for your software, uh, your software rollouts and, and the, the fancy UI, the fancy dashboards to see um, how many uh, devices are running what version of the firmware, etc., etc. So that's um, an, an important piece, right, of the, of the IoT uh, server stack. And there's lots of other services, right? How do you deal with the connectivity? Again, you might have like many uh, devices that are like brand new, and you're, you have lots of freedom to create like your custom maybe protocol to send data from. Uh, from your edge devices to, to the cloud, but there's also lots of brownfield devices. Some devices might be talking an old um, HTTP-based uh, kind of um, uh, protocol. How do you make sure to have one single consistent um, API for everything telemetry, right? You're, you're, you have devices pushing data uh, from the field. How do you address uh, the, the, the identity of, of the devices, no matter whether they're speaking MQTT over TLS or co-op or whatever, whatever else, how do you get to a point where you really uh, like start building your applications in a way that's really protocol agnostic? Uh, and of course, the other way around, you want to send uh, command uh, and control messages in, in, in a consistent way as well. That would be the scope of Eclipse Hono, right? So that's how, how do I deploy something that's protocol agnostic and that's scalable? If I need more, the ability to ingest more data into my backend, because now I have millions of devices, well, Hono is basically cloud native, to use a, a buzzword, and you can really uh, spin as many new, um, new instances of, of the service as you want. So that's another building block, if you will, for the, for the connectivity part. Uh, Eclipse Dido for digital twin. I want to interact with my... Um, uh, smart device with my IoT device, no matter whether it's effectively uh, attached to the network like right now or whether it's, it might be at some point, right? And I want to turn um, the light on or off virtually on, with my digital twin and at some point like Dido, for example, will know what it means to, to, to synchronize the virtual state of the digital twin with, with, with the real physical state. So that's, that's Eclipse Dido, right? And so all those building blocks, some of them, like you might want to really use them as just building blocks, especially if you already have um, the other pieces of the puzzle in your existing platform. Or if you don't, maybe you want to look at Eclipse Kapua, which basically defines the APIs for all those services that are required in a typical IoT solution, connectivity, uh, digital twin, um, device registry, blah, blah, blah. And so it provides a description of all those APIs and, and orchestrates them, provides a, a, a dashboard, etc. So by default, you could deploy Kapua with those services as the implementation, or you can, or you can maybe replace them uh, by, by other um, open source uh, projects or your own proprietary um, building blocks. And so, what's, so we've been around, and the community has been around for five or six years now, and there's lots of, just like very, very similar to, 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 to this community, lots of hobbyists, I guess, we, 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 we use and, and we develop the, the projects, but even more, uh, it's actual companies. And so this is one example, and like maybe the best example for me would be, uh, so this is Bosch, a Bosch conference, and basically for, most of the projects that I mentioned, um, they ship commercial products with like commercial support and and um, and SLA, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on top of the uh, Eclipse open source projects, they take Eclipse Hogbit, they add certification and support for their uh, their products, and and 
and they, they sell it, basically. Uh, but underneath, the, whenever there is a new, um, a new feature that they want to deploy, it's very likely that they will do it first in the open source uh, component uh, in, in Hogbit or whatever else, and then uh, like sort of extend it, package it ni nicely in, in, uh, in their commercial products. We do a lot of um, um, evangelism around, around open source, and if you, uh, and that's maybe one of my call to, calls to action, if you build some cool uh, technology on top of open source software, it doesn't have to come from Eclipse, I'll be happy, and we would be happy to, to help you sort of spread the word. We have a virtual and an online community where we do webinars um, uh, every other week. We organize um, uh, developer challenges for, for people to basically show what's possible uh, on top of, of open source software and what, what products can be built. Uh, we have a marketplace uh, that also helps really sort of articulate um, how to do business with, with open source, and again, to the point of growing the pie. People who build plugins for, say, Eclipse Cura or Eclipse Smart Home, our sort of gateway stacks, they can distribute them on, on the marketplace. And maybe that's something actually that, that would be interesting to see in, in the Things Network community, like leveraging the fact that people can build extension to the core infrastructure and allow them to, to market it. Like, it can be free plugins, but it can also be things for which you, you need to pay a, a fee or license, and, and we, we help people do that. Uh, one thing we do as well is test beds. Like, I've, I did lots of name dropping, and there's lots of projects that you might, might be having a hard time figuring out what they really do. Uh, with the test beds, we basically take real end-to-end -end, um, uh, use cases and show how project XYZ from the Eclipse community plus uh, project and, and products ABC from commercial vendors can be used uh, together to, to really build a solution and show where are the, uh, the points where uh, people can sort of extend the solution and, and really, uh, really add value, right? And what's, what's the, the core open source infrastructure and what's really the, the value add of, of all the, the, the partners in, in the ecosystem? So that's our website. I would hope that. Um, like, like I said, like there's, there's a lot going on, and my, my point was really to make sure that you guys build solutions on top of really cool open standards, open protocols for everything connectivity. What I think would be really sad is that at, at the end of the day, all the data, all the sensor data you collect, etc., ends up in some commercial cloud with like probably very, very cool features, but at the end of the day, like you're, you're really attached to, to particular vendors. Uh, I would hope that you start by looking at what's available in the open source community at large, uh, beyond uh, purely the, the connectivity uh, bits, and so edge analytics and device management, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, check out the, the virtual IoT uh, meetup for sure. Like I said, if you work on cool stuff, we'd be happy to have you there, or um, if you have a project that you think might be a good fit in, in the sort of the three stacks uh, picture, um, please come, come and find me as well. Um, and the shameless plug for, um, like this is something that I, I think is really valuable to the community at large. Um, the developer survey that I mentioned a couple of times already, we've been doing this three or four years in, in a row. We try to understand what people do with, with IoT and like, we are an open source foundation, so it's not like we, we're going to sell the data to, 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 to anyone. We, we just can't. Um, but having more data points is certainly very uh, valuable. So if you have eight, ten minutes maximum of your time to, to fill out the survey, that would be uh, incredibly helpful. And with that, I have, I don't know how many minutes, for questions. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benjamin Kabe. Right on time, perfectly. Thank you awesome. for that. I had no idea. <laughs> the survey, what is it about? So, um, IoT developer survey, it's basically what protocols do you use? Are you, um, uh, what cloud platforms do you use? Are you rolling out your own commercial cloud or are you running stuff based on um, open source components? Um, what, what verticals people are working on in IoT? Like, is smart building bigger of a thing than? Smart agriculture, etc. We, yeah, we we feel it's important to, to understand okay. what people really really do and we really care about security. Everyone security says, and, and that would be really interesting to see the trends. 
People say security is number one, number two, number three uh, concern in IoT, yet hardly anyone works on IoT security. So that's I always do. pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but the data of the server are open source, right? Absolutely, So yes. we can work with that too, okay. Yes. Any questions or remarks for uh, Benjamin? Yeah, over there. Hello, who are you? <laughs> Hello, I'm Timur from Russia. Yeah, uh, all we know is that uh, the uh, open source solution can, uh, it's a challenge for um, a lot of developers to start and get in start with products. But also we know that uh, all solutions need to certification and approve in a government organization. And uh, in practice, uh, would be would be enterprise solutions it's more predictable to apply the certification and the other features yeah. and what what should we do with uh, with the uh, open source solution when we work with government on uh, another cities yes. organization yeah thank you so i doubt that all the um the small and medium-sized organizations will deploy 100% uh, like open source stacks in their environments. What I do see, though, is that, and, and in the test beds, we actually um, uh, really, really see, see this a lot, is you start prototyping your solution using open source software, knowing that at some point, like when you go uh, to, to the market, you will need partners that will be able to give you SLAs and to, to to have like uh, uh, to provide you with um, the, the insurance that that your stuff will really work. So it's likely that at the end of the day, for maybe your, your cloud, you will partner with with Bosch or with Red Hat. They operate and they provide you with a, um, a commercial distro, if you will, for your um, for your IoT cloud. Or same for the gateways. And and back maybe to the Red Hat example. That's like in the Linux world. That's the perfect example. Like you, Linux is 100% open source. Yet you probably buy one way or the other uh, when you're, you operate servers like in, a criti in critical environments, you will pay uh, Red Hat licenses or whatever else because you want people to be able to, to come on site and, and debug uh, whatever is wrong in, in your, in, in, on your server at some point, right? So certification and, like, and, and, um, and, and all the, yeah, the, the agreements to have the, the SLAs, et cetera, they come with the ecosystem of vendors that provide stacks and, and co commercial stacks on top of the open source building blocks, I think is what what will be and what is happening. Does that answer your question? Yes. Anyone else? Question, remarks, theories, gossip? Anyone else? Last chance? No, thank so you, you very much. So you know where to find me. Yeah, you know where to find him. Benjamin Cabe.